You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I'm working on a recipe for pork chops. And although the original recipe that I'm kind of crafting from doesn't call for applesauce, I grew up with applesauce on the table whenever we ate pork. If mom was making a roast pork or pork chops, applesauce always went on the table. Just like you think of mint and jelly going with lamb, to us applesauce always went with pork. The two just belong together. Rather than going to the store and buying a jar of applesauce, I got to thinking, how difficult can it be to make it yourself? So I did some research on the internet it looks very doable. So that's what I want to do for this video today is I want to make my own applesauce from scratch. So let's start cooking. You need about three to four pounds of apples. That's 1.4 to 1.8 kilograms. And you want to peel these and quarter them and core them. The kind of apples to use are good baking apples like Golden Delicious, Jonah Gold, if I'm pronouncing that right, Jonah Gold, Granny Smith, Fuji, Jonathan, Macintosh, or got a big truck going by out there. Anyways, you get the idea. Baking apples, because these are going to be cooked. I'm using my ceramic potato peeler here. I haven't used this in a while. It's like I have to learn all over again how it works. If there's little bruises in there, don't worry about it because this is all going to get cooked anyways. Okay, almost lost it. All of this, I've got a bowl set aside for scraps, and then I'm going to cut my apple in half and then in quarters because it'll be a lot easier to finish these last pieces with the apple quartered. And then the easy way is to hold it well and then just go in with the knife and make sure the core is taken out. And that's all. You can leave that quartered. I've got a large pot here to the side that I'm going to put all these in. I've got seven of these apples to do because I did buy four pounds of apples. So there are my apples now, peeled and quartered. Again, that was seven apples, three to four pounds, 1.4 to 1.8 kilograms. Now, I want to take a, I've got a lemon off of a friend's lemon tree, and I want to just peel off about four of these strips of lemon peel. One from over here, I guess. All right, and I'm going to put those in the pan with my apples. Where's my knife? I want to cut my lemon in half. And then I want the juice from one of these lemons. I'm looking for about three to four tablespoons of lemon juice. These lemons typically don't yield a lot of juice, so I have extra lemons to the side there that I can use. And I can always walk over to her home and pick some more lemons. She said, come get them anytime you want. She doesn't use them, they just end up on the ground. See, these don't yield a lot of juice, but I have enough. But 
between what I get in the bowl and what I get on the counter. What have I got there? Oh, I have enough. That's easily three to four tablespoons. Okay, I've got to clean up my mess here. So there is my lemon juice. I'm going to put that in my pan. The lemon juice will kind of brighten that flavor of the apple sauce a little bit. I'm moving my pot now to the stove. To this I'm going to add one cinnamon stick. And that is about a quarter cup or 50 grams of white sugar, quarter cup packed 50 grams of brown sugar, one cup of water, and then a good pinch of salt, quarter to a half a teaspoon of salt in there. Going to bring my heat up. I'm using an old pressure cooker here. This was one that, well, it was made in China, piece of junk. The pressure regulator on the lid wasn't heat resistant. It started to disintegrate. I only got about a dozen uses out of it before it failed. So thankfully I didn't get burned. It just leaked a lot of steam. I'm bringing this to a boil. And once this comes up to a boil, I'm going to just reduce the heat and simmer it for about 20 to 30 minutes. Oh, and I have to cover this. This is the cover from the old pressure cooker. I took the pressure regulator out so it can just act as a regular cover with a little bit of a vent in it. Works fine. My apples now are fully cooked. I cooked those for 30 minutes and that was over a medium low heat. It didn't turn the heat all the way down to a low simmer, but it was low and it was a nice little boil going in there. And then for those of you who are on the metric system, because a lot of these my videos end up on the internet, that one cup of water was equivalent to 237 milliliters. Now, I have to wait for my apples to cool down to a point where they're comfortable to handle, and then I'll be ready to mash them. All right, let's see what the temperature of this is. I've let this cool down for a while. Again, this wasn't a pressure cooker. That's where the pressure regulator was. I pulled that out. So I have a little steam vent in there now. It works very well as a covered pan. Looks good. What's the temperature in there? 135 degrees. I think that'll be okay to start working with to start mashing that. I want to show you a close-up of what that looks like. There's a close-up of my cooked apples. You can see how nicely soft that is. I'm looking at the bottom and seeing just a little bit of syrup, but not much in the bottom of the pan. These might not need any draining. I was afraid I might have to drain these. So my next step now is to mash my applesauce and then store what I don't need, and I'll put aside what I do need for my pork chops. I'm trying to think what would be the best way to mash this up, and I'm thinking a potato ricer may work best. Either that or a food mill. This is so soft. Let me do it over this. Let's see what happens. It's going to smear out the... No, it's not going to smear out the top. That's not bad. Excellent. Okay, so I have all of this to mash. You're going to need something to mash the cooked apples. If you like it a little on the chunky side as far as your applesauce, you can use a potato masher. That should work fine. I don't even own a potato masher. I use a potato ricer. This thing works fine with me. You put the potato in there, push it through with a small screen in the bottom. I get a really nice mashed potato. 
that's probably what I'm going to use for my applesauce. But I do have, in case I wish to use it, I do have a food mill. If I were going to be making a lot of applesauce, like gallons of it, this is probably what I would use. It's so big, it can do a lot of processing in a little amount of time. But in my case, because I'm not making a lot of applesauce, I think I'm going to use my potato ricer. I'm trying to think what would be the best way to mash this up, and I'm thinking a potato ricer may work best. Either that or a food mill. This is so soft. Let me do it over this. Let's see what happens. It's going to smear out the... No, it's not going to smear out the top. That's not bad. Excellent. Okay, so I have all of this to mash. This is my 8-inch impulse heat sealer. I get more questions about this than anything from my website. I bought this at Amazon.com. And then I'm going to be using some poly tubing that I bought from a company called Uline. The letter U-L-I-N-E dot com. It comes in a big roll. I mean, a big, big roll. And it's expensive. It's about $100 for the roll. But per each one of these envelopes, it's only like a penny or two. It's very inexpensive. And it lasts for years. I'll probably get at least 10 years off of that roll. So I'm cutting a little bag for myself. I'm going to put this in a little, a big glass to hold it. Okay. And then I'm going to put my applesauce in there. Pick up any spills. And then... I need a piece of paper towel. I'm going to wipe this down like so. And then lift this out. I could get more in there, but I don't want to store it in big amounts. I'm just going to squeeze the air out of that. And seal it. So there it is. You can see no leaks. I can put that in the freezer. That's maybe half a cup. I would guess that's about half a cup. And then I've got it in the freezer for when I need applesauce. I'll keep doing all these. I'm estimating I'm probably going to get about six of these put away. So there is my finished applesauce. I'm going to put this aside now to eat with my pork. I obviously have more than I need, but I'll use that for some other meals. And then I've got my bags of applesauce set aside. I think I'm going to give one of these away to the neighbor who gave me the lemons be a nice gift in exchange. Okay, it's been quite a while now has passed because of two things. One is I want to show you this. This is my applesauce. I package them in little plastic packs, put them in the freezer. Applesauce freezes very well. So you can store it in the freezer and use it later. One of the recipes I read about said that you can keep it for a year in the freezer. And this is my refrigerated applesauce. I wanted to taste this cold because we always had it cold at the table. And I knew that would have a different flavor than it when it was tasted warm when it came out of the pan. <laughs> nice and smooth like baby food. Mm. Oh, that's good. I can taste the apples. That is obviously the strong flavor. 
Although the citrus in there, you can't really tell. It just, as I said earlier, it brightens up that flavor a little bit. And it's not as sweet as the applesauce in the store. Like I say about some things, I don't like them cloyingly sweet. This has got a nice apple flavor without being sweet. So this is delicious. I'm going to put this back in my refrigerator. There's homemade applesauce. Not difficult to make. Actually kind of fun to make. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.